gives us a huge opportunity to rethink our approach for the overall transformation of the education system, be it higher education, industry, academic collaboration, opportunities. I think uh, Prashasti will be in a better position to uh, speak about that. So without taking much time, I invite Prashasti Rasto, the director of the for campus for because till now we had the perspective from the ICT, from the university. Let's have a perspective from the industry. Huge round of applause for Prashasti for Kosnev for campus. Thank you, Shovik. And I think a uh, very thought-provoking morning. Uh, Chandra Shikhar ji talked about a few things. Uh, Sanjay obviously gave us a lot of questions that we can debate through the day. Uh, Namaskar, everybody. Uh, Pune, the right place to discuss about transformation, the Oxford of the East. This is a city where many Buddhists are in the thought-provoking questions that we can give some answers today. At Coursera, we've engaged with uh, about 86 countries worldwide talking about transformation of education. And there are some ideas and some trends and some patterns and some uh, advancements that we have observed. And I'll share a few of them with you today. Uh, please, if you have questions, feel free to raise your hand. I'll take a pause, address that question, and then I can continue. If that is permissible, Shavik. Thank you. So when we say advancing higher education, we are talking about curriculum to careers. And there's a reason to talk about that. Like Chakrashikha ji also said, we want job creators and job seekers in the economy. And where is that foundation laid? That foundation is laid in the higher education system when a student transitions from being a, a, a protected environment to school education to an environment where he has to open up her brain and she also has to adapt to the various dynamics that are happening around in the macroeconomic system uh, that the student gets exposed to. And for students, careers is the tangible outcome because now, as we say, yeah. lifelong learning is, is a trend. Degrees are not royalty for life. So the career transition also happens throughout the lifetime. And how can we give that learner a foundation to be able to do that? So I'll talk through a few of these pointers. So a little bit about Coursera. Um, Coursera started in 2012 at the Stanford University incubator by two professors, Dr. Andrew Eng and Dr. Daphne Kohler. The idea obviously they had in their head was how do we create a knowledge economy where we can disseminate world's best information happening in closed door classrooms to and make it equal opportunity and democratized across the world? And that was that is still continues to be the ethos of Coursera: equal opportunity to education, to learning, to skilling. There are about twelve crore registered learners on the Coursera platform, and there are about seven thousand institutions who leverage the platform to bring learning to students, to workforce, and to employees. Where is all this learning coming from? There are about 300 educator partners on the Coursera platform, both companies and universities, who author content on Coursera and certify students uh, when the skilling is completed. So this is the trifecta of Coursera integrating knowledge dissemination from one source to the other. Okay. All right. So I know this looks very complicated to read, but let me demystify this for you. When the fourth industrial revolution started, we talked about automation quite extensively. We said automation would happen and a lot of jobs, which are low skill jobs, will displace themselves. The high skill jobs, will continue to be special, more and more specialized because machines will do a lot of the work which requires low skills. The low skill workers started to move towards the high skill jobs by gaining credentials, digital skills and knowledge. Then what happened in 2023? Generative AI. Uh, Sanjay extensively talked about questions on AI. Chandra Shikhaji talked about uses of AI. I'll, cover, I took, I'll try to cover both today in my uh, thoughts that I'm presenting and would love a discussion on that later. So when generative AI came, 
we realized a lot of high skill jobs which involve patterns and decision making are also moving towards at risk of automation what does this mean as an impact for our economy so um here is a um, information from university of pennsylvania study up to 49% of workers could have or more of their tasks exposed to large language models which means even the higher wage jobs are at the risk of substitution by generative ai if the higher wage jobs are now getting substituted what are the new skills that will come in those jobs where we need to start a transformation today before it becomes too late so a little deeper perspective in 2016 we talked about risk of automation where the low skill jobs without formal education were on the top but cut to 2023 with gpt4 already live on most platforms we are also talking about degree earners to be displaced and the impact is even higher so in 4 years from today we will have 61% of the workers who will need retraining and 2 million digitally enabled roles will be added to the global global labor pool so we have good news and we have not so good news the good news is digitally enabled jobs are coming uh the not so good news is 61% of our workforce today is not ready to do those jobs if we don't act now what are the impacts in the higher education ecosystem and some of the things chatty shekhar ji already talked about he said we need to come together as a knowledge economy we need to increase collaboration um the education system is exposed to the <coughs> lego land of skill dynamics that is happening in the world today there are so many new technologies uh, that are interacting every day to kind of disrupt the way we function that education system has to quickly reassemble themselves to make sure that the students are employable and if and also skillable so in this uh, the universities are saying we can't do everything on ourselves how can we increase collaboration borrow and learn from each other and grow together the second trend is industry as educator industry is now stepping in as an educator in the higher education system say we know what are the skills of tomorrow we can help you build those skills while students are at the university third is building learner skill profiles most of the industry is saying skills is the new currency we don't want a resume which is showing ctpas we need a resume that tags demonstrative skills that the students are ready to do a job and then in the center of the entire ecosystem is the faculty they need to be upskilled continuously to deliver this excellence that is expected of us now what does it translate into for one institution at a micro level so given these rapid trends that are emerging there are four strategic goals that we have observed as top of mind for leaders in academia one is how do i enable academic excellence strengthening in my organization by bringing in industry aligned curricula and building faculty competency to digitally teach but also upskill themselves to emerging tech second focus is graduation outcomes employability of students how to position them in a way that they able to get jobs but also create jobs by being entrepreneurs uh, they are using micro industry micro credentials to hone skills of students demonstrate them and also inculcate project based learning they are also enabling placements in the focus with skill first hiring environment because that's what the recruiters are asking for and then growing rankings and brand perception is a constant top of the mind recall for educators because student perception and employer brand perception is what will augur the university onto a front runner path 
and how do I also make my business sustainable? How do I accelerate revenue and growth by opening up new diversified programs or also venturing into the online world where I can reach to more and more students who want this education but are not geographically located. So geography is no longer history, geographical opening has happened as of today. With this in mind, what are some of the ideas in which Coursera works with universities to enable that? So I'll give you an example of how a curriculum at a university looks like. So if a university is doing a B.Tech in computer science degree, these are, this is a sample illustration of some of the subjects that the students learn as part of their core foundation learning at the university. What they also need to be competitive in the four domains that we recently talked are some of the industry micro credentials to gain the skills and be employable. These can be delivered as part of electives and Coursera can enable delivering all these certifications in one go using the platform. What we are also seeing is In, even in your core subjects, if you would like to bring in the best of the knowledge and increase collaboration and assimilate whatever is available worldwide, Coursera platform enables you to assimilate that learning. For example, if you are teaching electronic system design at your university and you wish to integrate introduction to electronics by Georgia Tech University, it is possible today at the click of a button. The regulator says, Sorry. The regulator says that up to 40% of online learning can come from online sources to ensure that curriculum is always ready. So what happens here is the four core foundation of the learning continues to be within the uh, university environment, closely guarded with the university, but the university does a knowledge partnership for platforms with platforms like Coursera to bring in those new skills with, for which either faculty is not available or upskilling the faculty is not possible at that fast rate of change. What is the outcome if we do this? And I'm taking an example uh, of uh, Access Bank. Access Bank teaches their workforce, trains their employees and workforce on the Coursera platform. So we spoke to the Access Bank uh, CHRO and she said, for us, skills is the new currency. So we will look beyond formal education to find talent wherever it is. So they recently signed a partnership with Coursera to hire students from Coursera for campus platform. And here's one example of Anagha, who was doing her B.Tech degree at Graphic Era University and she had access to Coursera for campus at her university. She went, upon, she went ahead and did a data science with Python, my industry micro-credentials from IBM and stood out in the Access Bank recruitment drive because she could demonstrate the skills that Access Bank was looking for. This is how the graduation outcomes are also rapidly changing, uh, being empowered by institutions in different formats using technology as an enabler. Going a step ahead, going a step ahead, I would also like to focus a little bit on faculty empowerment. Generative AI can transform us in many, many ways possible. The challenge with generative AI so far has been misinformation because it scrolls the internet and picks out information for consumption, which is not always validated or verified. At Coursera, we changed the game slightly. We said Coursera is, has a repository of about 10,000 learning units, which are authored and verified by a university or an industry SME. So can we train the large language model to crawl through the Coursera platform and make recommendations more powerful, more concrete, and avoid all this information? So how can we ground it in expert content? Doing that, we built a tool which is called uh, AI Assisted Course Builder, 
This is for you as faculty to exploit and build courses using the power of AI, using the Coursera platform and transform the way you teach to your students. Sanjay also talked about teaching in regional languages. So while Coursera platform allows about 34 international languages, you could also take content which you have in a regional language and use the AI to integrate it seamlessly and create a course which is tailored to your students. And I'll play a short video to demonstrate how it happens. Let's meet Jenny. Jenny wants to help her learners grow their leadership skills. She has some of her own content to get started with. And she knows Coursera can take what she has and build an engaging private course in only a few clicks. Here is how we're helping Jenny. She can build her course manually or save time by getting assistance. Coursera's easy offering helps Jenny build out the content. She can tell her what she wants the course to be about and the skills she wants learners to gain. For example, a leadership course covering skills including communication, team building, and diversity, equity, and inclusion. In addition to her content, Jenny is also looking to include video clips from participating partners to supplement her private course and make it more interesting and relevant for her partners. She can add her files as source materials, such as recordings of previous lectures, training sessions, or written documents like a syllabus or a list of skills. Now, Jenny is ready to generate a course track. Coursera will analyze her inputs and create a course structure, generate content from her uploads, recommend existing Coursera content to include, and apply pedagogical best practices. Through easy offering, a first draft of the course was created for Jenny based on the English she gave it, and now she can review and edit the content. There are a few modules. Some videos that are from her upload, which were split into shorter clips, alongside videos from other authors, and an audio generator reading an assignment. Let's take a look at the first video. Can we pause here, please? This is a clip of just. Yeah. So, what you saw is uh, the example of a faculty called Jenny. So, Jenny was trying to build a course on leadership skills. So what Jenny first of all did was input the program objectives in as a text prompt into the Coursera editor and then also uploaded her syllabi and the video lectures that she had in her repository onto the Coursera platform. She also said I'm open to recommendations from pre-existing Coursera courses to build my course back. And the easy authoring tool assisted by AI on the Coursera platform, not only generated a course draft, it also chopped Jenny's large video content into bite-sized learning modules based on the inputs that were given to the large language model. It also recommended courses from industry and university partners, which align with the learning objectives from the syllabus, and went ahead and generated a glossary as well as a project-based assignment for Jenny to look at and integrate with the course. Now Jenny is able to review these things and change them because they are sitting in the draft board. So we can play on. <coughs> the preview includes an originated summary derived from the transcript and highlights to jump to each video segment. Jenny can adjust the way the video was trimmed and tweak the summary. She can also edit the generated transcripts and skills that are attacked in this video. She can check out the videos from other participating institutions that were suggested to add to the course. This one looks interesting. Jenny can watch the preview read the summary or skip to the highlighted segments of the video to get a quick sense of it. 
She can also look through other alternatives by telling Coursera what she's looking for. So she's finding the most popular videos about module one. It suggested three other videos. After reviewing them, she can decide which ones to use to supplement her course. We can stop Olivia you. Was also originally. Yeah. So this is what I wanted to kind of share today. Uh, what we can actually do using the power of generative AI in the right way, we can actually enable all of you to create a content which is adaptive to your learners and deliver it in a seamless, scalable way across the globe. Wherever your learner are, this can go. This is the power of AI that we're trying to bring to the world and uh, would be happy to take any questions from you. Sure. Thank you very much for your attention and time. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Prashasti Rastogi, Director of Coursera for Campus, for sharing with us how Coursera is making a difference by bringing three ecosystems together, learners, education institutes and industry, and how the platform is working seamlessly, uh, and also leveraging the power of uh, emerging technologies such as AI and others. Thank you so much, uh,